Right now, details from an overnight crash involving a Madison Police Department squad car. Plus, the Wisconsin presidential primary is just two days away. Our beta Ross breaks down what you need to know before you head to the voting booths. And it's Easter Sunday. See how some locals celebrate the joyous day at the Garver Feet Mill. That's all coming up on News 3 Now at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jalen Banks. It's not just the presidential primary Wisconsin is voting on Tuesday. Our Brandon Ross joins us with a full ballot breakdown with what you need to know before you head to the polls this week. Wondering what will be on your ballot on Tuesday? Well, let's break it down. We'll start with the big one, the presidential primary. Democrats, your choices are President Joe Biden, Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips, who has already dropped out of the race, or the uninstructed vote, an option many progressives in the state are choosing in protest of President Biden's handling of the war in Gaza. Republicans, you have five candidates to choose from, although Donald Trump is the only one still in the race. You also have the uninstructed option, although there isn't the same kind of organized movement for conservatives to make that choice. Then we have the statewide constitutional questions. Republican lawmakers added these to the ballot in response to the 2020 election where several Wisconsin municipalities took private funding to help with the expenses of running an election. Things like masks, sanitizing and social distancing during the pandemic. Question one will ask voters if it should be illegal for local governments to use private money to conduct elections. Question two asks voters if it should be illegal for anyone other than legally designated election officials to work on elections. Generally, conservatives favor voting yes on these questions, arguing that elections should be exclusively funded and run by the government. Liberals tend to advocate for voting no on the measures, saying they're too broad and could limit voting access. We've also got plenty of local elections on the ballot. 91 Wisconsin school districts have referendums coming up on Tuesday. Four of those are in Dane County. Now that's Stoughton, Wisconsin Heights, McFarland, and Marshall. You can find all this information and plenty more online at channel3000.com right now. And be sure to keep up with us on Tuesday for all the election results as they come in. Jalen. Braden, thank you. Now switching gears, let's get a look at your first one forecast with meteorologist Buddy Reeves. Buddy. Thanks so much, Jalen. Yeah, we had a beautiful day here across southern Wisconsin with temperatures in the 40s, cloudy skies, and the rain did hold off for most of your Easter Sunday, but now that is a beginning to start to change as we head on into your overnight hours. We do have some rain showers down near Perry, just south of Mount Horeb and also just south of Stoughton. As we widen out the view, most of the rain showers right now are towards the Platteville, Monroe and Janesville areas. And this rain will continue to move across the area as we head on into your overnight hours. Again, it's going to be the scattered variety type. Temperatures right now are in the lower 40s. Uh, 43 here in Madison, a little bit cooler as we head towards the lakes. As we plan your day tomorrow, look for temperatures to start out at 36 degrees. We will have those shower chances through the afternoon. Coming up in Maine weather, we'll talk about the rain and that four letter word is back in the forecast snow. That's all coming up in Maine weather. All right, we'll see you then, buddy. A 39 year old male is missing from the Dane County Sheriff's Office Jail Diversion Program. Richard Williams was declared missing Sunday morning after deputies received an alert that Williams had cut off his GPS monitoring bracelet and was last seen in the Madison area. Williams is serving a sentence for operating a motor vehicle without consent, theft, and violating a domestic abuse order. A warrant has been issued for his arrest. Anyone with information should call the Dane County Communications Center at 608-255-2345. An arrest has been made in a hit and run crash from last February. 21 year old Tiambra Walker was arrested Saturday in Peoria, Illinois, and charged with aggravated assault on a police officer, escape, theft, and resisting and obstructing justice. Walker allegedly hit 66 year old Stephen Fleck and his dog last February on Schrader Road in Madison. She was charged last April with hit and run involving death by death homicide by intoxicated use of a vehicle and bail jumping. We have video of a crash on Madison South Side. Madison police say the crash is a result of a shots fired call in which the suspect fled from the scene. The crash happened near the intersection of Moreland Road and Raywood Road in a neighborhood south of the Beltline. Video here shows an MPD squad car busted up along with two other involved SUVs. Madison police say their officer was treated and released. The suspect is now under arrest. Dane County sheriffs are investigating the crash. A memorial is growing in a community 60 miles west of Chicago, where a sheriff's deputy was killed late Thursday. 
Illinois State Police say 35-year-old Christina Musil was sitting inside her Ford Explorer squad car when a large commercial truck ran off the road and rear-ended her. She was airlifted to a local hospital where she died of her injuries. The driver was, who hit her was taken into custody. Deputy Musil was a five-year veteran of her department. She also served in the Army National Guard and had a tour of duty in Afghanistan more than a decade ago. Residents say they hope the tragedy will lead to a change for what they say is a dangerous stretch of road. It's been nearly four years since the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. An area near where police killed the 46-year-old is known as George Floyd Square. And city leaders say they should have plans in place for the future of that intersection by the end of the year. Meantime, they held a meeting with community members on Thursday to get their input. Jason Rontala was at the meeting and has more. And the community is trying to do this all together and not just, it's got to be my way. No, it's got to be my way. Fee Kalar has been coming to George Floyd Square every day since 2020, helping clean up and meeting with people in the area. Fee attended Thursday night's meeting at the Sabathany Community Center. The dinner meant to gather a more community-centered vision for the future of George Floyd Square. What I would want to see with the property is maybe... Uh, preservation steps, taking the steps to make sure stuff is taken care of that people put their energy into making here. Planners say the vision would both honor George Floyd, incorporating memorials and art, while ensuring that the area accommodates foot traffic, cyclists, transit, and nearby businesses. The middle of the square, it should be more traffic safe, but some of the things might need to get pushed back, unfortunately. We actually started off right after George Floyd and all that, the pandemic and all that. Shamar Steele and Jordan Finnell work in the area at the restaurant Just Turkey. I feel like a, a better investment into this area would bring more positive people around there, you know. I just feel like they need to clean up the streets, you know, things that ain't supposed to be there, people that ain't supposed to be there. The two say it's about finding a balance. This block right here changed the world. You know, and, and for us to change that, I I don't think that would be a good idea. City leaders say their purchase of a property in the area will help move plans forward. They expect to implement their vision for George Floyd Square by next year. And getting back to more local news, although it's a bit chilly, spring is in the air. After all, it is Easter. And the Garver Feed Mill invited all to come out and have brunch and play some games before sending the kiddos out hunting for Easter eggs in the Garver Atria parent-child programming where the parents can enjoy food and drinks in Garver Lounge and the rest of the Garver Feed Mill building and um, the kids can enjoy some games and activities in the large atrium space behind me. This is the second annual egg hunt for parents and children. The kiddos were encouraged to bring their own basket or craft one at the craft station. There were spring themed games, prizes, and for finding eggs and more. The next series of parent child programming is happening in the fall, so be sure to keep an eye out. You think you got what it takes to dance battle? Well, some folks certainly do. And they had the chance to prove it at the Battle of the Badgers, created by the Hitters Collective. The Hip Hop Festival collaborated with Fusion Concepts, offering dance workshops, performances, seminars, and more. Their goal is to educate the public on street dance and give opportunities for dancers. And dance teams also auditioned for a spot in the USA Finals. But the whole festival is about uh, collaborating with Fusion Concept. They're based out in Paris. And our goal here is to find the best dancers from the U.S. to go out to Paris and represent over there. For the ones that don't think they can dance, you could instead watch any future events with the Hitters Collective. Just visit their website at www.thehitterscollectivellc.com. And next on News 3 Now at 10, Consumer Reports breaks down the best banking apps to use. And we head to Baltimore to see the city's cleanup efforts after the deadly bridge collapsed this past week. Monday, April 1st is April Fuels Day. Earn a 30 cent high V fuel saver for every $30 you spend. Not kidding. Earn a 30 cent fuel saver for every $30. Monday, April Fuels Day at High V. America, it's a 24-7 kind of place, and that's where Ford Escape comes in, the ultimate getaway vehicle. With available driver assist technologies like pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking and bliss with cross-traffic alert to help you get away from it all, even when you're right in the middle of it. 
You got this with Ford Escape. Choose Flex Buy on Escape with 0% APR financing for 66 months, plus 1,500 Flex Buy cash. See your Wisconsin Ford dealer. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. A lot of law firms claim to be experts at handling injury cases that involve large trucks. But handling one trucking case does not make you an expert on the subject. Experience matters in these cases. One local firm has handled 25 trucking cases which resulted in payments over $1 million each, and hundreds of others as well. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. The Honda you want is here. Drive in the moment with the rugged and capable Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot. Find your adventure with great offers now available on the Honda you want. All from the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. Monday, April 1st is April Fuels Day. Earn a 30 cent high V fuel saver for every $30 you spend. Not kidding. Earn a 30 cent fuel saver for every $30. Monday, April Fuels Day at High V. It wouldn't be April Fool's Day without Joel McHill. Guys, do you know why I give Jennifer those flowers? Why? We're getting married. Ah. Plus, I fool some super fans. Hi, Brandon and Cody. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10, moving forward. When was the last time you stepped foot in a bank? Today, many of us skip the branch and instead bank on our phones using an app. With this shift, there's been a rapid rise in digital-only banking services. Consumer Reports looks at which banking apps you can bank on when you need them. Depositing checks, transferring funds, paying bills. Gone are the days of having to go to a physical branch to do any of these chores. Now... They can be done anytime, anywhere, using an app. In a recent survey, Consumer Reports found three out of four people use one or more banking apps. Which apps are the best? We evaluated these apps for safety, privacy, transparency, support for financial well-being, and accessibility. Sierra looked at the apps of five large traditional banks and five online-only digital banking providers. If avoiding fees is essential to you when looking for a new banking service, a digital bank may be your best bet, but there is a trade-off. We found that most of the digital banking providers offered consumers free checking and savings accounts and tended to provide higher interest rates. On the other hand, we found that traditional banks offered more features and tools to help you budget and save. When it comes to protecting your data, all the apps have flaws some more serious than others. Most of these apps tend to share more data than what is needed, while only some of the banking apps allow you to opt out of targeted advertising. No matter what app you choose, banking securely is important. Use Face ID or a six-digit PIN to unlock your phone. On the app itself, enable two-factor or multi-factor authentication. And if you lose your phone, alert your bank right away. This is David Fazekas. Consumer Reports also recommends you allow the app to send you notifications for every withdrawal or deposit made into your account so you can quickly spot potential fraud. AT&T is reporting a massive data breach that affects some 73 million accounts. Yesterday, the company said the data included personal information of current and former customers, including social security numbers. AT&T says all that data was shared on the dark web about two weeks ago. The leak does not appear to contain financial information or specifics about call history, according to the company. AT&T is now reaching out to customers and asking them to reset their account passcodes. It is also urging customers to remain alert about changes to their accounts and credit reports. Crews in Baltimore have started to work on clearing the wreckage from this week's bridge collapse. CBS's Christian Benavides reports the road to recovery will be a long one. 
Work to clear the wreckage from this week's bridge collapse and restore entry to the port of Baltimore is underway. Officials hope to open a temporary channel to get smaller ships moving back in the port. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg on Face the Nation. This is going to be a very complex process. There are even now forces acting on that steel. So it takes a lot to make sure that it can be dismantled safely, to make sure that the vessel stays where it is supposed to be and doesn't swing out into the channel. But it has to be done. Still no timeline from when the port will reopen has left thousands of port workers waiting. We're all wondering how long it's going to take to clear the main channel so we can get ships back in so we can work. The city's mayor says $300,000 has been set aside for the families of the victims who died in the collapse between government and nonprofit groups. And federally, about $2 million in small business loans has been set aside for companies who have been affected. I am to focus on the total impact of on humans, right? And that begins with the loss of life. That then goes to uh, uh, what's going to happen for those families and then the economic uh, realities following this. And that's where our focus is going to continue to be. Baltimore-bound container ships now being rerouted to other ports. Baltimore handles more cars and farm equipment than any other port in America. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. President Biden is scheduled to visit the site of the bridge collapse next week. And it was a bit of a chilly Easter Sunday to see how long that might last. Let's get a look at your first one forecast with Buddy Reeves. Buddy. Thanks so much, Jalen. Yeah, it actually was a little bit chilly today. Cloudy skies did give way to some showers as we moved on into your evening hours, but it held off for most of the day. Unfortunately, the rain is going to continue as we head on into your Monday. And I did mention that four letter word. It is in our three things you need to know. A cool start to your week starting on your Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Along with those cooler temperatures, we are going to see uh, rain as well. And then there it is, a chance of snow as we move on into your Tuesday and your Wednesday. Taking a look at current radar right now, we do have some showers down near Fitchburg, Belleville, Mount Horeb and Perry. And as we head down towards the south and east, most of the rain showers are along the Illinois state line. We do have some showers out near Elkhorn and then also off to the west. Some showers near Platteville, Fayette and also Dodgeville. So these showers will continue off and on tonight and then planning your day for tomorrow. Look for temperatures to be in the middle 40s with rain showers off and on throughout most of your afternoon. So let's break it down hour by hour starting out at 7 o'clock in the morning on your Monday around 36 degrees. We will have some uh, peaks of sunshine early in the morning, but that will then give way to scattered showers throughout most of your Monday afternoon and your commute home tomorrow. You will be probably seeing some showers depending on where you're at across southern Wisconsin. Then as we head on into your Monday night and your Tuesday morning, this is when you start to see the snow up towards Camp Douglas lacrosse. Then as the afternoon progresses, I did stop it here at noon. Look at this transition over to yes, that is right snow. Uh, around your lunch hour on your Tuesday. And then once it transitions over to snow, it will continue as snow as we head on into your evening hours. Now, the one thing I do want to point out is the temperatures. The temperatures are going to be above freezing. So anything that does fall is going to mainly accumulate on the grassy surfaces as the roadways will be above freezing. So it shouldn't affect your commute, but you can um, expect those uh, Snow showers to continue as we head on into your Wednesday. Precipitation in the form of liquid precipitation is around an inch. And then when we look at the snowfall, again, this is just an estimate right now. We will fine tune this as we get on into the morning hours and tomorrow afternoon with meteorologist Alex Harrington. We could see upwards of two to four inches. And again, this is going to be a very slushy accumulation. It's not going to amount to too much. And it's also going to melt pretty quickly after it falls in the next couple of days. So we'll continue to watch that. So the bottom line to all of this uh, is the rain showers on Monday that will mix possibly to change over to snow on Tuesday and your Wednesday. And again, I want to emphasize that accumulation will probably be mainly on those grassy surfaces. So your seven to 10 day forecast look for uh, these temperatures 46 for tomorrow. 45 on Tuesday and looking at the latest weather models right now, uh, Wednesday and Tuesday could be actually a little bit colder than what we're predicting right now. So Kelly Slifka will update that as we move on into the morning hours. And then as we head on into the rest of your week into your weekend, we're going to notice 
the chances of showers decrease and the temperatures start to increase. So Jalen, any snow that does fall on Tuesday and Wednesday, it's not going to stick around too long as those temperatures are going to rise and the sun angle is pretty high, so it's going to melt pretty quickly. I mean, no worries as long as we push through the next seven days. Yep. I saw some 60s off into the distance. So yeah. it's if, gonna, it's gonna, if we got a couple days of some cold weather, maybe even a dash of snow, I think we'll be all right. Yep, uh, winter to spring, all on a week. All right, well, sounds good. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. And coming up in sports, the Brewers looking to start their season off with a sweep in the Big Apple. Andrew has the highlights next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Sometimes the do-it-yourself route isn't the best option. <laughs> Call Monona Plumbing instead and get your plumbing problem fixed right. A name you can trust when service is a must. They say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, they are correct. Enjoy one of our tasty bagel sandwiches paired with a caramel frappe. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Take advantage of exceptional financing at your local Cub Cadet dealer today. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. Mike Super, Magic and Illusion, America's Got Talent finalist, winner of NBC's Phenomenon, leaving audiences speechless. Now you can see Mike Super live. Saturday, June 15th at Ho-Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. A show for the whole family to enjoy this Father's Day weekend. Mike Super, Magic and Illusion at Ho-Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. We really need new siding. After I get my windows. Have you tried opening ours? We're not touching the windows until we redo the roof. It's leaking. Ah, happy spouse, happy house. Exactly. Wait. Everyone can agree on 1-800-HANSEN's because our windows, roofing, siding, and gutters are all guaranteed for life and our baths have a no leak guarantee. Get 60% off installation or no interest and no payments for two full years. Call 1-800-HANSEN's. Get it done. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Right now, you can get 3.99% APR for 60 months on a new 2024 Camry, RAV4, or Tundra Hybrid. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome to Lobster Fest. Is your party ready? Ready to attack this new lobster and shrimp stack? Ready for your lobster lover's dream to come true? They're two of ten lobster creations only at Lobster Fest. Plus, Cheddar Bay's for days. But Lobster Fest won't last, so hurry in. Sometimes the do-it-yourself route isn't the best option. <laughs> Call Monona Plumbing instead and get your plumbing problem fixed right. A name you can trust when service is a must. When Craig Council skipped town, there were a lot of questions about first-year skipper Pat Murphy's Brewers. The crew could answer all those questions with a season-opening sweep in the Big Apple. Colin Ray taking the hill against the New York Mets. And how about that rookie phenom, Jackson Churio, the first player born in 2004 or later to play in MLB, but you wouldn't know it. The RBI double makes it a 2-0 crew lead in the second. And then in the sixth inning, William Contreras, the catcher, picking it up right where he left off in his first season as a Brewer, drives in the run, and the crew win it 4-1. The Pat Murphy era starts with the Brewers' first 3-0 beginning 
since 2018. On the flip side of that, Wisconsin softball looking to avoid getting swept by Nebraska in their home opening series. We pick things up at extra innings. Top of the eighth, Nebraska at the dish with one on and two out. And look at Peyton Bannon flashing the leather to keep a run off the board. Take one more look. And then in the ninth, Nebraska with another chance to crack the egg. And this time they break through. Brooke Andrews blasts one to center. The Huskers score and they'd win it too. Five to four is your final score. The Gallery Classic out in California. Steve Stricker entered the final day of the competition in sixth place. Here he is on 13, and look at that beautiful second shot. Lays it up and would get the birdie putt to fall, so we skip to 18. Stricker closing in incredibly strong, even if it wasn't quite enough to make a push for the win. He had five birdies in his back nine, including this one here. He finishes at 10 under on the weekend, tied for sixth place. The Badgers, they run the world, or at least they'll try to. Sixth Wisconsin women's hockey players were named to USA Hockey's Women's Worlds roster. That's headlined by Kirsten Sims and Britta Curl. The tournament starts in just a few weeks. And if you missed the madness right here on CBS earlier today, we've got you covered. DJ Burns Jr. and his Cinderella NC State Wolfpack continue their unreal run, taking down Duke, and that 11 seed is headed to the Final Four. And then we'll take a look at the other side of the game we saw today. Zach Eady and his Purdue Boilermakers taking down the other team in this one, 40 points, and it looks like, speaking of others, we're on the other story. Let's talk about this, what we're looking at right now. The NCAA became aware today that in the women's Elite Eight Regional in Portland, the three-point lines were at different lengths on the same court. Five games had already been played on this court. Texas and NC State decided to play the game anyways today instead of waiting for the fix. So we have our final, 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 Final four bracket. Right, how many, right, right. I don't know how many finals that was, <laughs> but of course we've got Purdue, yeah. UConn, Alabama, coached by Nate Oates, a native of Watertown, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool. And of course, I'm missing my four, my fourth one, which would be NC State. So yeah, that's I mean, it's fourth. been a fun NCAA tournament so far. A lot of close games, unless you're UConn, you know, a lot of a lot of butt whooping that they've been doing as of late. But to think that we've already got somebody that was born in 2004 oh playing professional gosh. sports how fast is time flying yeah i know speaking of time flying this one's kind of crazy i just read this purdue making the final four is the first big 10 team to make a final four since 2019 really is that even believable yeah i mean one of the best basketball conferences in the country or so we think of it right hopefully i mean i know that they're conference rivals but represent Take Absolutely. It yeah, right. I, I think that a lot of Wisconsin fans are going to be rooting for the Boilermakers, maybe. Maybe. All right, well, sounds good. Thank you, Andrew. And a final check of your first one forecast is coming up when we return. It's A1 Furniture's truckload mattress blowout. Queen Luxury Firm mattress only $299. Queen Euro Top $399. Queen Jumbo Plush or Firm just $499. All sizes available during this once-a-year mattress event. Only at Madison's locally owned A1 Furniture. There's never been a better time to switch to Spectrum. Spectrum Internet offers speed and reliability, while advanced Wi-Fi gives you best-in-class security for all your connected devices. And Spectrum Mobile delivers unlimited talk, text, and data with nationwide 5G included. Switch now and get Spectrum Internet for $49.99, plus advanced Wi-Fi and one Spectrum Mobile Unlimited line free for 12 months. Start saving today. Visit Spectrum.com, a Spectrum store, or scan to call now. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us. With expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Take advantage of exceptional financing at your local Cub Cadet dealer today. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. 
seaport, steel bars that hold up bridges, propel ships, and send rockets into space. But for years, China's been lowballing their prices, so it's been tough to compete. We can't let China steal Wisconsin jobs, so I wrote a law to require American infrastructure projects use American iron and steel. Tammy Baldwin got President Trump to sign her Made in America bill. And then she got President Biden to make it permanent. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. Tammy Baldwin has our back. This is Ford Truck Month. With amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks, make way for the event that only comes around once a year, featuring the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. Get ready and get to Ford Truck Month. Choose Flex Buy on F-150 with 1.9% APR financing for 66 months, plus 2,000 Flex Buy and 1,000 open trade assist cash at your Wisconsin Ford dealer. Get instant cash back at A1 Furniture. Save $50 off every $500 you spend, plus incredible in-store only deals. Your choice, two-piece sofa and love seat or sectional, just $10.99, and get the recliner free. Only at Madison's locally owned A1 Furniture. Chris Stanford, News 3 Now This Morning, moving forward. In less than an hour, we will be on to April as March closes out. I have a quick question for you guys at home and you two sitting next to me. Do you know why April 1st is called April Fools? I feel like there's a joke coming here, no, but I say no. No joke. I, no I don't. joke. If I weren't uh, a news anchor and a reporter, I would be a history teacher, so just a quick history lesson. Let's hear it. The calendar we currently have is called the Gregorian calendar. It was adopted, and majority mm -hmm. of the world started taking this into account and adopting it in the end of the 1800s and into the 1900s. Uh, before the Gregorian calendar, vast majority of the world used what was called the Julian calendar. The first day of the year for the Julian calendar was April 1st. Huh. Mm. And so when the world transitioned over into the Gregorian calendar, there were still those that used the Julian calendar. Oh. And so people called them April Fools. That's uh, still interesting. the first day of the year was April 1st. Now, huh. as far as where all the jokes and pranks came from, <laughs> I don't have a history lesson on that, but that's where April Fools That's came really from. interesting. Wow, that is I interesting. had no clue. I all right. I, I, speaking of dates and calendars, we got a few on the radar <laughs> moving forward. Yeah, it's not uh, going to be a nice day tomorrow. We have rain showers on Monday that is going to mix to change to snow by Tuesday p.m. And then those accumulations are going to be mainly on the grass surfaces. We will have updates in the morning with Kelly Slifka.